Good evening, everybody. Good, evening. Good to have you here. Let's all stand. Open up your hymnal to 379. 379. Bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the morning, sowing seeds of kindness, sowing in the noontime and the dewy eve, waiting for the harvest and the time of reaping, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Sowing in the sunshine, sowing in the shadows, fearing neither clouds nor winter's chilling breeze. By and by the harvest and the labor ended, we shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. Turn around, shake a few hands, smile at somebody. shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves, 
Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Bringing in the sheaves, bringing in the sheaves. We shall come rejoicing, bringing in the sheaves. Amen. Amen. Good evening, everybody. Good to see you tonight. Glad that you're here, and we appreciate you coming and taking your time on a on a stormy Wednesday night to be with us. As we open in prayer tonight, we do want to remember to pray for Greg Tumpower. This is uh, Mary Ann Trumpower's husband. Uh, he went in this, uh, what was it, Monday? And they uh, uh, did a stress test, and they said that he had just a, a little blockage in the bottom of his heart, a vein. And so today they scheduled him to have a, the, the balloon procedure. And I don't know what all transpired, but they found out that he needs to have triple bypass. And they rushed him down to uh, uh, Washington Medical Center. And so I uh, want to keep him and her in prayer. I do not know when the surgery is going to be, if it's already been in process or what. So keep that in prayer. And then Audie Dollar, good to see you, Audie. I see you passed the test. Amen. <laughs> A plus. <laughs> I doubt it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, and Linda Lawnecker, let's keep her in prayer as uh, I have not heard yet. I tried to call today and did not get an answer. I tried to call yours and uh, no answer machine. You guys got to hook up your answer machine or. Oh. Oh. Well, that's neat. No, I'm not going to say it. Thought better of it. Amen. Good to see everybody tonight. Aren't you, isn't it good to be in the house of the Lord on a Wednesday night? Praise the Lord for the time that we can spend together. It's always good to be with the family. Brother Eric, would you open the service in prayer tonight, please, sir? Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. It's a privilege tonight to have with us the Scholl family from Greenland. And uh, Brother Scholl and his family were pioneers, are pioneers, miss missionaries to that nation and have, through him, God has used him and their family to open up that country uh, to the gospel message. And so I'm so thrilled to have them as part of our missions family. Brother, you come. God bless you. Amen. Wow. Good to be back. <laughs> how many of you remember us? It, I was trying to figure out how many years it's been. It's been a, over 16 years since we were last here. And uh, we appreciate, you know, you expect us to be faithful. Well, we appreciate you being faithful. Amen. Uh, you haven't seen us in so long, yet you've been faithful all these years. You've been holding the ropes for, for your missionaries, uh, for your missionaries in Greenland. And we, uh, we have needed a lot of rope holding. Amen. And uh, we appreciate that. God has brought us through a lot. And uh, we just thank, we're thankful to be here again. Amen. Uh, but we've been in, uh, in Greenland for 14 years now, and uh, God has done the impossible over and over again. I'm going to talk a little bit about that in the presentation and also in the message. Uh, but uh, we first got there, we were, there was nothing, and by God's grace, we now have uh, several ministries that, go, that are going on, Sunday church service. We have a kids ministry. We have uh, a lot of kids come in every week. Uh, in one year, we have like over 100 different children. And uh, our town only has 5,000 people in it. So that's a lot of children coming through there getting the gospel. Amen. Amen. Uh, we able, were able to go into the prison ministry and, and give the gospel to inmates there. And uh, we've seen people saved. And, and uh, we're just praying the church will grow. Amen. Uh, but you uh, keep praying for us. Uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, information about Greenland. Uh, how many of you know where Greenland is on the map? Okay, good. Now, Greenland is one and a half times larger than the state of Alaska. Uh, but uh, all, the pe all the villages in Greenland are along the coast. And um, there's around uh, 55,000 people in the entire country. Uh, but there's no roads connecting the villages and towns together. So the only way to get around is pretty much by boat or plane. And we only have 10 uh, runways or airports in Greenland. So you can imagine all these villages that really are never going to really hear a clear presentation of the gospel unless somebody uh, purposely takes the gospel to them. Amen. And uh, that's what we are tried, or started to do in our town. Where we live, uh, we live in the Disco Bay. 
and it has not, the word disco has nothing to do with disco music or disco <laughs> ball or whatever. Uh, but in our bay, there's, a, there's actually an island across from our town. Uh, and in, in the entire bay, there's 11 other towns and villages. And uh, you may remember that we started the boat ministry. Amen. And uh, we've been able to reach several of those villages with, with uh, the gospel tracts. We go, we go in these villages and we, we distribute uh, gospel tracts to people. And uh, our desire is, is one day maybe to have enough interest where we can uh, start a ministry and maybe start a church in these other villages and towns. Uh, but you keep praying for us. Keep praying for our boat ministry. Uh, pray for those children I mentioned. Uh, they come from broken homes. And uh, you can only just, just imagine how, how, uh, how hard those children, their homes are. Uh, just the, the social uh, problems, the, the, uh, the alcohol abuse. Uh, I mean, it's just really bad. There's actually more abortions each year than births in Greenland. I um, mean, just so many social problems. Uh, and the only thing that's going to change, uh, change them is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's why we're there. Amen. And uh, we thank you for sending us. And at this time, we'll, we'll show the DVD presentation. Greetings from Greenland. We're the Shoal family. We're going to give you a glimpse into our mission field, the coolest place on earth. We've been serving the Lord here since 2007. We are the first Baptist missionaries in Greenland. When we first arrived, there was no one waiting for us at the airport. There were no believers, no veteran missionary, no one. We did not have long-term housing, nor could we speak the languages. We had three children under the age of six, and my wife was expecting our fourth child in a month. We knew no one. We were alone. It was just us and God. When all you have is God, then you find that he is all you need. And as he has proven to us over and over again, with God, all things are possible. We now have a church building a home with plumbing, a car, a boat ministry, a children's ministry, a prison ministry, and of course, our Sunday services. I preach several times a week in Greenlandic, one of the most difficult languages in the world to learn. We started with no gospel literature, but the Lord has enabled us to translate many tracts into Greenlandic. Our family is a vital part of the ministry, from cleaning, feeding, teaching, etc., they are involved in every aspect. We started with a few children in our one-room apartment, and today we have a church full each week. This is our local prison, which houses inmates from all over Greenland. 
Once released, they return to their hometowns and villages. I regularly hold services in here. So we are literally reaching all of Greenland through this prison ministry. God miraculously opened up the door for us to come into this closed country and through his divine intervention, we are able to invite other missionaries in. We are the only way they can legally come into the country. With God, all things are possible. The Lord has brought us a long ways from where we started. However, we still have a long ways to go on this pioneer mission field. Please keep praying for these precious Greenlandic souls that Christ Jesus died for. The Bible says, How shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach? except they be sent. Everything accomplished for the Lord in Greenland is fruit added to your account. I've been sick. <laughs> we have been on the mission field since 2005, and many of you we have never met, and others we have not seen in a very long time. But I want to thank you for holding the ropes for this missionary family. Thank you for your faithful prayers and faithful support for us. God bless you. else had before had the privilege of reaching and now they're going to be held accountable to the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. What an exciting, exciting thing and what a pioneering mess, uh, ministry. And uh, I was well, looking at the pictures and, and <clears throat> it looks like it's a, a little cooler there than it is here. But uh, maybe God is working in your heart and I'm sure that uh, the Shoals family could certainly use some help in the country of Greenland. So appreciate that great presentation. Thank you. All right, come lead us in the hymn. Well, all right, if you'll stand with me, open up your hymnal to 396. 396. A John R. Rice song. We'll do the first, second, and the last stanza of So Little Time. So little time, the harvest will be over, our reaping done, we reapers taken home. Report our work to Jesus, Lord of harvest, and hope he'll smile and that he'll say well done. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest today is given us lost souls to win oh that
and to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. How many times I should have strongly pleaded. How often did I feel to strictly warn the spirit moved. Oh, had I pled for Jesus, the grain is fallen, lost ones not reborn. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. Verse 5, the harvest white with reapers few is wasting, and many souls will die and never know. The love of Christ, the joy of sins forgiven, oh let us weep and love and pray and go. Today we reap or miss our golden harvest. Today is given us lost souls to win. Oh, then to save some dear ones from the burning. Today we'll go to bring some sinner in. You may be seated. Remind everyone about uh, tomorrow with the Operation Door Hanger. Uh, if it is raining, we will not be going out tomorrow. But if it's not raining, uh, we will be going out 1030 and put the uh, door hangers on the door doorknobs again tomorrow morning. And then remember, then the following Tuesday evening, we'll be going back with our Tuesday evening visitation, knocking on doors, and we will not be doing our Thursday uh, door hanging. So keep that in mind. Also, uh, appreciate everyone putting... Uh, Things in the baskets for the Crown College uh, trio girls that will be coming uh, up when, when we have our 40-year uh, celebration. And so keep them coming in. Let's get them filled up uh, for these young ladies as they travel. Pray for their safety. I saw today where a, uh, a group from Oklahoma, did you see that? They had a, uh, one of their traveling groups, their van caught on fire out in the middle of nowhere and burned all up. Saw pictures of that today. No one was hurt. But we need to be praying for these uh, people as they're out traveling through the uh, summer. And so let's keep praying for them, pray for safety as they travel, and let's be a blessing to them. Also, uh, ladies, please, if you have not signed up for the brunch, few seats are left, please make sure you see Miss Bonnie tonight. If you did not, get not, did not get signed up for that brunch on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock during our, our anniversary celebration, and then Parents of teenagers, please remember that Monday with the teenagers, we'll be going out visiting uh, with the Crown College group uh, from like 10 to 12. Then we're having lunch here at the church, and during that time as we prepare for lunch, they'll have time to actually spend with them uh, during that time as we get prepared. So that'll really be a good time of fellowship with them. So please uh, have your teenagers here for that Monday of our um, cel anniversary celebration. And then please, you know, it's only two and a half weeks till we celebrate 40 years at Harvest Baptist Church, and we want to uh, uh, make a special conference, and it'll be special by you being here, inviting others to be your guest uh, for the conference, you know, as it kicks off on Sunday, July 18th. And I know that'll be a real blessing. We have, uh, we have videos. We've been talking about audio testimonies, presentation, gifts, uh, for coming to the services, different things, and uh, let's get involved with it. Do what we can. Invite other people. Be excited about it. this. Is for the theme is for such a time as this, and that's why Harvest Baptist Church exists uh, here today for such a time as this to reach not only our Jerusalem here in Hagerstown, but we can support missionaries all around the world. And uh, for you know, when we get to heaven, we'll find out uh, everything that was accomplished because of Harvest Baptist Church. And we need to be grateful. Let's be praying for those services, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, uh, special speakers, and uh, just be a great time. Looking forward to everything that we have going on. Let's take advantage of every opportunity that we have coming our way. Thanks. Amen. 
Well, all right, let's all stand. Hymn number 374. 374. Last one up sings a solo. <laughs> Send the light. <clears throat> There's a call comes ringing o'er the restless wave. Send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save. Send the light, send the light, send the light. The blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And the golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Oh, send the light. Blessed gospel light, let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Verse 4, let us not grow weary in the work of love. Send the light, send the light. Let us gather jewels for a crown above. Send the light, send the light. Oh, send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the light, the blessed gospel light. Let it shine forevermore. You know, I was just thinking while we were singing that song, uh, one of my hardships in life is language. You know that from listening to me preach. <laughs> but to think of learning the, one of the most difficult languages in the world, you know, even if we were able to go there, we would have difficulty. We would need Brother Shule or somebody to interpret. But think about this. When we get to heaven... We're all one language. Amen. All one language. We'll be able to communicate with those that we've never met here. But because of your faithful giving, we've been able to send a missionary, have a part in that. And we'll be able to see those folks and fellowship with them and understand how important it is to get the gospel into every corner of the world. God bless you. Thank you for being faithful. Brother Jared, lead us in prayer, would you please, sir? Yes. the opportunity to give and to be a part of sending your word forward into the darkness of this lost and dying world. We pray that you would just bless and multiply the offering that we have, that we would continue to be faithful in sending folks and in spreading the good news of the gospel through this world that so desperately needs it. Please just do the preaching tonight, and the pastor give us open ears and receptive hearts. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
Well, I'm looking forward to the preaching tonight because it's not me. I'm uh, looking to hear what Brother Shul is going to preach. I know it'll be a blessing. Uh, I, I really admire this family to go to a place like that and to stick as they have and been faithful and God has blessed the work. And uh, that's what we want out of our missionaries. And so I, I appreciate so much the family. And so he's going to come in just a moment before he does, uh, the ladies and the Barry and I. So thankful to be here, and uh, I can't say it enough, but thank you for your faithful support over so many years. Appreciate you all. I appreciate this church being faithful. Uh, but take your Bibles and turn to uh, Matthew, Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn to Acts 14 for a moment, but Acts chapter 19. Uh, but some of you are probably thinking about the weather in Greenland. Well, uh, yesterday it snowed, okay? <laughs> um, but actually, in the summer, we, we don't get snow all the time. Um, we actually, it'll get up to 60s sometimes. Uh, the average is usually in the 40s and 50s in the summer. Uh, we do have uh, the three months of sunlight during the summer. And then we have, uh, where we live, we're 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. So we have two months of darkness, of no sun in the winter. And every January 13th is Sunday when all the people uh, in town, they go up to the mountain and they greet the return of the sun. <laughs> uh, but... Um, uh, the language, of course, we were talking about the language a little bit. Uh, so I thought maybe I should teach some of the young people some Greenlandic, uh, see how many of them can get it, and we'll take them with us. Amen? <laughs> uh, no, but uh, some simple words. If you uh, saw somebody in Greenland uh, and you want to say hi, you, we say ayungi. Can you say that? Anyone? You all can, all can try. Ayungi. ayungi. That's a, that's a, that's a short abbreviation uh, for saying, uh, do you have it not bad? <laughs> and so that means, are you doing good? You know, you have it good. And uh, so you say, Yungi, someone says a Yungi to you, or you say a Yungi to them, the response is, uh, you, you know, yes, I'm doing good. You say, Sue, Sue. You can say that? <laughs> Sue. 
And then if you want to say, what about you? How are you? You say, ich <laughs> liebe mich. That's the hard one there. Ich liebe mich. That means, what about you? How, how, how about you? Uh, but our town that we live in is a Ludaset, and uh, that is a native word for icebergs. And as you saw in the video, uh, there's lots of icebergs. We live right beside one of the most productive glaciers in the world. There's enough ice coming out each day that could supply New York City with fresh water for a year. So just think about all that ice. So you pray for us when, uh, you know, when we write about the boat ministry, you would be thinking about all the ice that we have to navigate around. Uh, pray that God gives us safety. There's been um, times we've been out there and, and uh, we were scared. <laughs> a lot of ice out there. And there's also two currents in the middle of the bay. So you have current coming this way, current coming that way. So there's been times I've been, we've been in the middle of it, a big iceberg coming this way, a big iceberg, iceberg coming that way. And, you know, you've you got to figure out, should I gun it or should I go reverse? <laughs> what, what do we do? Uh, but God has uh, protected us. Amen. Um, but that's, that's what I want to talk to you a little bit this evening is about what God has done. Look at Acts, or you can just listen, Acts 14, verse 26. And thence sailed to Antioch, from whence they had been recommended to the grace of God for the work which they fulfilled. The Apostle Paul is returning to his sending church, right? The church had sent him in Antioch. And he says, When they were come and had gathered the church together, they rehearsed all that God had done with them, and how he had opened the door of faith unto the Gentiles. And there they abode long time with the disciples. Here in the Bible we have the very first missions conference. The Apostle Paul had just returned from his first missionary journey, and he went gathering the church together and said, hey, I got some good news. I'm going to tell you what God's been doing on the mission field. Amen? And that's what I want to do tonight, just tell you a few things about what God has been doing. Look at uh, Matthew 19, verse 26. But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God, we can say it together, but with God all things are possible. Amen. Say it one more time. With God all things are possible. Let's open up in a word of prayer. Lord, we ask you to bless your word. Uh, encourage us, Lord. Just uh, through uh, all that you've accomplished, Lord, it's all you, Lord, we know that, and uh, we can't do anything on our own strength. We need you, and thank you for all that you've accomplished here, Lord, even in Hagerstown, and, and what you're doing through this church, reaching the world with the gospel. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Uh, with God, all things are possible. Uh, this has become my life verse ever since God uh, has called us to the mission field. Uh, William Carey, a pioneer missionary uh, called the father of modern-day missions, uh, he said, uh, expect great things from God, attempt great things for God. Amen. Is God big? <laughs> Is he big? Uh, that we should attempt great things for him. Amen. And expect great things from him. Uh, the Bible says with God. And that's the key. With God, all things are possible. And it's got to be with God, right? And as a 19-year-old, uh, uh, God called me to Greenland. <laughs> now, you, a lot of people ask, well, how did you know God called you to Greenland? Well, at the time, I didn't know. I was just praying. I surrendered to go. Uh, I was at a missions conference where uh, there was a missionary to the Arctic of Canada. And he was showing those presentations of the Arctic. And I remember thinking to myself, there's no way I could ever do anything like that. Uh, but I surrendered to go. And uh, I began praying. I said, Lord, uh, send me somewhere where there's not a lot of missionaries. Amen. <laughs> uh, be careful what you pray for. Amen. God will uh, answer that prayer. And uh, God put on my heart Greenland. Now, at the time, I didn't know it was God. I just, just Greenland came to my mind. This was kind of before the Internet, before Google. So there was no research I could do. I just had my parents' uh, encyclopedias from the 70s. And you can just imagine what Greenland was like in the 70s. Uh, so I began praying, Lord, you know, is this, is this for sure? Just let me have no doubt about it that this is where you want me. At the same time, I, I met Carol in, in Bible college. And, uh, I was, and then she, she graduated the year before me. We were writing each other. And I asked her, I said, would you be willing to go to Greenland? Or I'm sorry, I didn't say that. I said, would you be willing to go to the mission field with me? <laughs> and uh, she said, yes. So I uh, asked her to marry me. And she said, yes. And then she said, where are we going? <laughs> and I, then I told her Greenland. Amen. <laughs> and uh, she still married me and she's followed me to the ends of the earth, literally. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. And uh, when we, uh, we got married and we actually took our honeymoon to Greenland, uh, we killed two birds at, at once there. Uh, very expensive to travel to, to Greenland. And uh, we went there on our honeymoon and, and God just once again just confirmed that this is where he wanted us to go as missionaries. Well, we went on deputation, and uh, we, as we were nearing uh, to leave for the mission field, we applied for residency. Now, Greenland is part of the kingdom of Denmark. So we applied, and Denmark said, no, you cannot come into Greenland. Uh, they said, the only way you can come into Greenland is if you have an invitation from a Baptist church in Greenland. <laughs> of course, there were no Baptist churches in Greenland. So we began praying about what to do, and uh, we found out about the country of Iceland. How many have ever heard of the country of Iceland? I just found out the pastor was there uh, in the military years ago. 
Well, we found, about, found out about Iceland. There were already missionaries there, so we moved to Iceland. And if we lived in Iceland for seven years, then we could get Icelandic citizenship, and then we could move into Greenland uh, without applying for, uh, for any uh, visas. So that's what we did. We moved to Iceland, uh, but God had other plans, amen? You know, after a short time in Iceland, uh, God opened the door to Greenland. Uh, there was a, a U.S. Uh, military base there, a naval air base, and there was a Baptist church to the military there. And the pastor asked me to, to preach one Sunday and present my, my ministry, our, our burden for Greenland. So I did that, and there was a woman there who worked uh, as a liaison to the NATO forces. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with the NATO forces, but that's like maybe 20 to 30 different countries working together with their militaries. Well, uh, the woman was a liaison uh, to the NATO commander, and uh, the commander just happened to be from... Denmark. Amen. And he just happened to own houses in southern Greenland. <laughs> and uh, she told him about us. And he said, he said, tell that missionary to put my name on the application. Pretty impressive. Danish commander of NATO forces. <laughs> I never met the man, never talked to the man. Uh, but he gave, uh, gave us permission to use his name. And God opened up the door to Greenland. We got into Greenland way ahead of schedule. We needed that. We needed all that time to learn the language. Amen. Uh, but God, with God, all things are possible. And we've seen God do that over and over again. And we, I know we were on cloud nine when, uh, when God opened the door to, to Greenland. I mean, we were just so happy. I mean, everything was falling into place. I don't have time to tell you all that God did. But it was miracle after miracle. I mean, God financed that. We were under support of it. God financed our move uh, to, to, to Greenland. And we were on cloud nine. And then we got to Greenland. And we fell far, far, far from the sky. And uh, reality set in. Amen. Uh, we were all alone in Greenland. And we got to the airport. This was the first time Carol actually saw the town of Eludeset. And uh, we got to the airport, and I I'd, I'd called there. I uh, reserved a hotel ahead of time, and they were going to pick us up. But we got to the airport, and there was nobody there, nobody to pick us up. And we watched everybody leave the airport. These, this is just a small building. This room here is bigger than our airport in, uh, in Eludeset. <laughs> and we saw everybody leave the airport, and uh, we were thinking, what are we going to do now? Well, there was a payphone. And some of you kids probably don't know what a payphone is, but your parents can explain that to you later. Uh, but the payphone was out of order. So we began praying, and uh, there was somebody, someone in the back room who came out, uh, one of the workers, and uh, we, we explained our situation. She called the hotel, and, and they, they sent a van. They picked us up. <laughs> uh, but they were some of the hardest times in our lives, our first, uh, first year, really, in Greenland. Uh, my wife, when we arrived to Greenland, she was eight months pregnant. And we went to the uh, midwife. And the midwife said, oh, I, we can't deliver the baby here. You're going to have to go 400 miles south to the capital city of Nuuk. So that's what she did. Uh, uh, you can just imagine my wife, she's, uh, she's a trooper. You know, I told her before we came, before we went to Greenland, I said, I said, if you want to go to America and have the baby, we can do that. If you want to stay in Iceland, she already had one baby in Iceland. I said, we can stay in Iceland. And she said, no. She said, God opened the door up and we're going to go right through it. Amen. And uh, so she went uh, to Nuuk, to the capital city. Uh, she took Anna. Anna was how old? Three years old, four years old at the time. And uh, Carol went down there. And you know, like I said, we were undersupported at the time. But uh, churches heard about our need, and they sent money for me to go with uh, Christopher and, uh, yeah, Christopher. Oh, yeah, we only had three at the time. Yeah, Christopher and Amelia. <laughs> and I went to, the, to Nuuk, and Carol was staying in a patient hotel. Now, Greenland is a socialized uh, country, so don't think of hotel like you think of America. Uh, this was very basic, no housekeeping, uh, uh, very small room. And uh, my wife was staying in there. They had uh, one bed, uh, one single bed and one pillow. And then all of us came in there, all the rest of us, there was five of us staying in that one room. And we didn't care. We just wanted to be together. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, Carol was the patient. The patient is free in socialized medicine, but the rest of us weren't free. And every day we had to pay for the room, even though we we're sharing the pillow and the bed and the blanket. We had, to, we had to pay for the room and then we had to pay for the food. They were actually providing, they provide food for the patient. So Carol was able to eat all the whale blubber and all the seal meat she wanted. And uh, so we also got to eat that. And uh, after about three days, um, Carol told me she couldn't sleep all night. And she said, uh, we, you can't stay here. It's too expensive. We were figuring it out. It was like over $400 a day. And uh, she's like, you, you have to go back to, to Ludaset. I'll, I'll be okay. <laughs> Uh, my, wife, my wife's a precious woman, amen. Uh, if you're going to be in a ministry, you better have a good wife, amen. <laughs> and you're going to do anything for God, what, no matter what it is. If you're just going to serve in the church, you need a good wife, amen. Uh, but uh, she said, you need to go back to Ludasac. Well, that morning, uh, we went to the, uh, the hospital cafeteria, and the woman who ran the cafeteria, uh, ran, ran the patient hotel, she uh, came to us, and in broken English, she said, secret, you keep secret. Now, she did not know anything about us. Just, she just knew that we were the Americans all staying in that one room. <laughs> And uh, she said, you keep secret. You know, we're like, we had no idea what she's talking about. What is she talking about? She said, you don't pay. 
uh, you stay, you eat, and you don't pay. Well, we ended up being there for a month. So you can imagine the bill that we would have had, but God erased that bill, amen. Uh, with God, all things are possible. <laughs> uh, look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 with me for a moment. Uh, if you're going to do anything for God, it has to be with Him, right? Uh, in Philippians 4, 13, we can read it together. I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me, amen. It's got to be through Christ, right? Uh, if you're going to do anything for God, it's gonna, you're going to need the strength of Christ to be able to do it. You know, people ask us many times, well, how, how, how do you do it? How did you do it? Well, it, it was only by God's uh, uh, strength, by God's grace, amen. And, uh, you know, when we first got to Ludasat, we didn't have uh, uh, long-term housing. We only had temporary housing. And uh, the landlord said we had to be out in three months. Well, there was a housing shortage in Greenland, and we couldn't find anywhere to live. And my landlord, he told me, he said, I have a place for you. <laughs> uh, be careful the landlord say that, right? Uh, but... Uh, I went to look at it, and what it was, it was uh, a one room. It had been the fire chief's office until it caught on fire. And uh, they, had, they had remodeled a little bit and painted over the walls. There was a little soot coming through. And we, when we moved in, we made, made that room our living room by day and our bedroom at night. But then just imagine your mind on the side here, there was a wall, and someone took a saw and they, they cut a hole out of the wall. It wasn't square. And you, uh, you had to duck your head and lift your foot up to get through the hole. And then there was concrete stairs that led down to a little kitchenette area with a, uh, 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 we call that a hot plate for, for a stove, and which was, everything was fine. You know, it was small, but we could, we could make this work. It was the right price, amen. And then I went and looked at the bathroom, and in the bathroom was a honey bucket. Uh, how many of you know what a honey bucket is? <laughs> that is a, uh, a plastic toilet with a bag, uh, no plumbing. Well, the worst part about it is that the bucket was already full. <laughs> and... Uh, I called my landlord up and, he, uh, and I said, uh, and I, can't, I can't live like this. I'm a missionary. I, I didn't tell him that. <laughs> I'm American, right? No. Uh, isn't that funny? You kind of you start reasoning all this stuff. Well, God wouldn't expect me to live that way. Well, why not? Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, how did Jesus live? You start looking at that. You'll, you, how did Apostle Paul live? Amen. Uh, but my landlord said, I'm out of town. I can't change the bucket. So uh, I decided I would do it. I, I uh, went over there and and uh, I just, I just, I actually couldn't do it. I was just looking at the bucket and I went back to Carol and I said, Carol, I said, you know, God would not want us to live this way. Amen. I started getting spiritual, right? <laughs> God wouldn't want us to live this way. <laughs> and uh, Carol, she told me, she said, Chris, said, God had done so much. You know, he, he'd done the impossible. He opened up this country. She said, we can do this. I mean, all the things that we'd overcome, we can easily overcome this. He said, we can do this. Just go ahead and change that, that bucket. <laughs> <laughs> So I got my rubber gloves and I went back <laughs> and uh, you can just imagine the fumes coming up. And as I, start, as I started to take that bag out, it started to tear and leak. And uh, so I, I just disconnected the ventilation pipe and I just lifted the whole bucket. You can imagine how heavy it was. Uh, it was full to the top. I just lifted the whole bucket, took it outside. And the exact moment I put that bucket outside, a truck pulled up from the local government, the municipality there. And in the back, they had a, a big cardboard box. And you'll never guess what was inside that box a brand new honey bucket. And oh, I had gone around the, the week before looking for one, could not find anyone, all, anything. All I could find was a little camper's toilet for like $500, and I wasn't going to spend that much. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. I went to, uh, to the, back to the house and told Carol, and we fell on the ground weeping and praising God for a honey bucket, amen? <laughs> Puts things in perspective, doesn't it, amen? And we praised God for that. And we moved into that, we moved into that apartment, and uh, God blessed. You know, they were some of the hardest times. Uh, but they were some of the best times because it felt like God was right there with us. Amen. There were times that we was so hard, but it felt like God put his arms around us and he said, I'm with you. Amen. Uh, you, man, I, I would love to, to feel that again, but I don't want to go back to the honey bucket. But I would love to feel the presence of God so close like then. And, and uh, of course, don't feel bad for us now. God has blessed us. And, and now we have a dream house. Uh, you can ask Carol. It's a miracle what God has done that we have plumbing. I mean, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Look at Zechariah 4. Uh, with me for a second, Zechariah 4. Now, when we finally got a house with plumbing, uh, our little girl, Amelia, um, she was just really small at that time. And Carol told her to put uh, the dirty clothes in the washing machine. And uh, a little bit later, one of the other kids came and said, somebody put clothes in the toilet. <laughs> she, Amelia didn't, she forgot what a toilet looked like. <laughs> but in Zechariah 4, verse 6 and 7, it says, Then he answered and spake, spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain. Amen. 
Uh, it's by the Spirit of God, right? By His power, by the power of His Spirit. And He says, uh, those mountains will be like plains. How many times have you seen God remove a mountain in your life? Amen. Uh, God does that to everybody, not just a missionary, not just a preacher, but God does the impossible in, in His children's lives. And if you're one of God's children, He wants to do the impossible in your life. Amen. Uh, but um, the Bible says, if you faint in the day of adversary, adversary, your strength is small. And if we try to do it in our own strength, we're going to fall, aren't we? But if we do it by, by the strength of Christ and in the power of His Spirit and with God, we can overcome it. We can stand in the day of adversary. adversary right? Amen? Uh, but when we... Uh, I've been living in Greenland for a short time, for a couple, several years, actually. Uh, we ran into a, uh, a tax problem. I don't know if you remember that. That was a long time ago. We ran into a tax problem. And uh, when I first got there, I had gone to the tax department and I explained you know, how my income was coming from America and how, and how I would pay these taxes. And uh, they said, okay, good. Now... I'm looking back, I realized that they didn't understand a word I was saying, and they were just agreeing with me. <laughs> uh, the natives will do that. The natives will agree with you sometimes. If they, don't, they don't want to hurt your feelings or act like they don't know, so they'll just they'll agree with you. Be careful. <laughs> well, uh, we ran into a tax problem, and I, I got a tax accountant, and he, he looked at my tax, my, our income and everything that happened, and he said, just, just looking at the top, look, looking at it right away, he said, whoa, you're going to owe like 45000 American dollars. And I tell you, that, that was one of the worst, uh, worst bits of news that we ever got on the mission field. I really thought that I ruined God's work. I thought we were going to have to leave the mission field. And, I, you know, I, we, were, we, were, uh, we were just devastated. We were praying and asking God, you know, what can we do? And I, I wrote a letter to churches. Did not ask for money. I just told churches what the, the dilemma was. In one month, $46,000 came into our mission agency for our tax problem. I mean, think about a church providing for taxes for a missionary. Well, uh, praise the Lord, the story doesn't end there. Uh, I, I met the, the head of the tax department. I met with him. He came to our town just to meet with me. Just imagine, just imagine the head of the IRS coming to meet you. <laughs> uh, I was nervous. And uh, we sat down and talked, and he told me, he said, I'm being very lenient with you. He said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make your, make your ministry a nonprofit organization. Uh, that means that anything used for the ministry is not taxed. Amen? And to get something like that, you have to have like 50 members. Now, the most we've had in a church service uh, it was 39 people. So it's going to take us a few years to have 50 members in our church. Amen. Uh, but we got that nonprofit status overnight uh, because the Bible says that the, the king's heart, right, is in the hand of the Lord. Amen. And he turns it uh, whither, whither, whither he shall. Amen. I didn't quote that from, mem uh, from memory. Sorry about that. But um, you know what I'm saying. Amen. Uh, but the king's heart is in the hands of the Lord, isn't it? And uh, the guy, uh, somehow he found, we found grace in his eyes. And the story doesn't end there. He said, what we're going to do is we're going to make your nonprofit status retroactive from the day you arrive to Greenland. Now, I'm a missionary. I keep my receipts for everything. Uh, so I was able to give all my receipts to my tax accountant, and he got the taxes down to $15,000. Amen. Now, I, I, uh, wrote, I wrote churches, and uh, I said, uh, you know, we have money left over, and uh, there's a building for sale in Greenland, 2,000 square feet, which is very big for, for the Arctic and uh, I asked churches, I said, would you mind if we put the money toward the building instead of taxes? And every single one said, yes, please put it towards the building instead of taxes. Amen. Uh, God provided over and over again. With God, all things are possible. Amen. Uh, we've seen God do it over and over and over again. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 6 with me for a second. Ephesians 6. The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as a rivers of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. Amen. There's, that's the verse. But Ephesians 6 verse 12 Pastor, um, I forgot my watch. <laughs> what time is it? Ephesians 6, 12. I tell my kids if they shout amen, I'll take one minute off my message. So <laughs> <laughs> Ephesians 6, 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Uh, we're in a spiritual battle, aren't we? And uh, sometimes we don't realize that. We don't, we don't understand that because we're kind of, we're, sometimes we're in a bubble, aren't we? We, come, we have our Christian friends. We come to church and we can get together and fellowship. But there is a spiritual warfare out there. And uh, it's the same everywhere. It's in Hagerstown. It's in Greenland. And I believe that the devil, ha he has a hierarchy. And um, he has a, a governor you know, of Maryland, a, 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 a demon 
or, you know, uh, spiritual wickedness in high places, right? He has uh, a mayor of Hagerstown. He has a mayor of a Lutasat. He has a president or a prime minister of Greenland. And you know what? The devil does not want to lose any territory uh, uh, to the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he's going to fight us, and he's going to do everything he can to discourage us. Uh, we could talk about Greenland. I told you about all the problems Greenland has. There's so much suicide in Greenland. It breaks my heart every time we hear about a suicide. Many of the ones that have committed suicide, I've actually had an opportunity to, not many, but several I've had an opportunity to give the gospel to. Uh, but, uh, but it just breaks my heart every time I hear about someone committing suicide. Why? You know, we're right here. We have the gospel. We're giving them the gospel. Uh, we have had a neighbor commit suicide one time. It just breaks our heart. We, we have the gospel. Hope is right there next to you. We're right there. Uh, we just want to get the gospel to them. But the Bible says the God of this world is the devil, and he has blinded the minds of the lost, lest they should see the glorious gospel of Christ. And you and I, we need to let that light shine. We need to let it shine right here in Hagerstown. We need to let it shine in Greenland. We need to let it shine around the world. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's the only thing that's going to give people hope. The only thing that's going to change people's lives is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, the Bible says, A greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So even though the devil is so great, he's called the God of this world, there's someone who's even greater, amen? And that greater person lives within us, amen? The Spirit of God, he lives within us, and we can overcome anything. Anything. The Bible says that the gates of hell should not prevail against the church, amen? And uh, that's Hagerstown here. It, you know, we see how America is, is falling apart. But as long as this church keeps preaching the gospel, amen, uh, Hagerstown has hope. <laughs> America has hope as long as churches like this keep on preaching the gospel. Don't give up. Don't quit. Amen. Uh, keep at it. Uh, there's never a good time to, to quit. The devil is not going to quit. That's right. yeah. And I praise God that God will never quit. <laughs> amen. And you say that you've, 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 you're not, you've made lots of mistakes in your lives or whatever. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> God forgives us. He says, get back up. Right? The just man falls seven times, but he gets up. Amen. And I'm so glad that even though we fall, we can get back up and Christ is right there to help us. And God is there to give us the strength we need. Uh, but look back at uh, Matthew chapter 19. But in Greenland, they have uh, the state church. Um, uh, the state church teaches that when you are sprinkled as a baby, that you are born again. And that's the hardest thing. That's the biggest obstacle we have. Because if you ask someone if they're a Christian, they say, yes, I'm a Christian. Because they've been sprinkled. And uh, that is the biggest obstacle. And getting, just getting people into the church is an obstacle because it, there's a stigma for someone to actually come to the Baptist church and not go to the state church. You know, people look down on them for that. Uh, I had one man who told me, I he, he, uh, met him years ago. He was a taxi driver. This is before we had a car. And uh, he was talking to me and I was telling him why we were there. And he told me, he said, I would never, ever come to the Baptist church because my grandmother was a priest in the state church. Well, fast forward it a few years. And uh, we lost contact with each other. Uh, but thanks to social media, he found me. And he told me, he said, uh, I like to be your friend, but I don't want to be a Baptist. <laughs> and I said, that's okay. We can be friends, amen? And uh, we became friends. And you know what? I've lost count how many times he's been to the Baptist church. <laughs> and uh, you pray for him. He is close to salvation. I mean, he has asked so many questions. We've, I've showed him in the Bible many, many times. It's just that, that last step to take. His wife is against it. His wife does not like him coming. So you pray for that man. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. Look at Matthew 19. We're almost done here. Matthew 19, the context of the passage of Scripture. Look at verse number uh, 23. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? Now I don't know for sure, but in my mind, uh, why would the disciples ask, Who then can be saved? In my mind, I would always think the disciples are looking at these rich people that have an easy life, right? And uh, their life is a life of ease, yet they could not accept Christ as the Messiah. It's so easy. If they can't be saved, how could anyone be saved? How are people, how are harlots going to be saved? How are the publicans going to be saved? How are the poor going to be saved? How are people going to turn from their sin and be saved if the rich people who have an easy life can't, can't be saved? And Jesus said, with men, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And the context, I think, is uh, the battle for souls, is salvation, right? Uh, with God, all things are possible. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, it is possible to be saved, amen? Because we have a loving God that sent his son, uh, Jesus Christ, God himself in flesh, came to this earth, earth and died on a cross for your sins and my sins, amen? And he, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, amen? Whosoever is everyone, amen? It's the Greenlanders, it's the Americans, it's everyone, praise God. With God, all things are possible. You know, uh, with God, 
it is possible to start a church 200 miles north of the Arctic Circle. Amen. <laughs> uh, with God, it's possible to learn the, the Greenlandic language. Amen. Outside of God, that would be impossible. Uh, it's possible with God to translate gospel tracts into Greenlandic. Amen. We've seen nine tracts translated into Greenlandic. With God, all things are possible. Uh, with God, uh, it's possible to have people coming to church every Sunday in Greenland and hearing the gospel in their own language. Amen. It, with God, it's possible for people to get saved in Greenland. Amen. Uh, it's possible for children to, to memorize John 3.16. All the children and even the adults that come to our, through our ministry, I can look at them and say, John, say John 3.16 and they'll say it from memory. Uh, last month before we left, we had a uh, Romans Road competition. We had 11 verses in the Romans Road uh, for the children to memorize. And, and the, the parents did it, did it as well. Amen. And I told him, I said, if you can memorize all 11 verses, I will take you out to eat. I don't know if I should have done that, but we did it. Amen. And we took them out to eat. Uh, but they are memorizing God's word. All the important verses. If we weren't there, they would never know anything about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you weren't here sending us supporting us and praying for us. Just think uh, what would not be being accomplished. <laughs> With God, all things are possible. And I said it before and I'll say it again. You have a part in everything accomplished in Greenland. Uh, the inmates that, that have made a profession of faith, the people in our church that have been saved. The one, there, we've actually, actually had several people that have come through our church. Uh, just recently, there's a family, a married family. That's, hard, that's rare in Greenland to have a married family, married couple in church. Uh, but they, were, they came for six months and only missed one church service. Only one church service. They came Sundays, they came Wednesdays, they came to all the special activities. And uh, they, they uh, moved uh, to another city. And they, they, said, they told us, they said, won't you come with us and start the church there? Uh, There's another guy in the prison uh, who moved to South Greenland. And the same thing. He said, why don't, why don't you come to, to South Greenland and start the Baptist church there? Amen. Just imagine if we weren't there. Uh, but you know what? Uh, we're, we're not enough. We need more people. Amen. Uh, there's a lot of work to be accomplished uh, for the Lord in Greenland. But with God, all things are possible. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Amen. Amen. And uh, there have been times, you know, uh, we were discouraged and we thought, man, there's no way I can, we can do this. Uh, but with God, all things are possible. And it's been by God's strength, by, you know, by with God, by Christ's strength and by the power of the spirit that God has kept us going. And uh, it's really the prayers of God's people. Uh, there, there were times that money would not have helped us on the mission field. Uh, I only scratched the surface this evening. But what prayer is what changed things for us. Amen. And uh, there's so many times people have written me and, and said, uh, we're praying for you. Other times, uh, out of the blue, people would just tell me, I've been praying for you for the last 15 years. How humbling. I didn't even know who they were, yet they've been praying for us. Amen. Uh, with God, all things are possible. And that applies not just to the missionary, but also to you. Uh, there is a great task. I've seen America, uh, whew, it's changed a lot since we left. We've been gone for 16 years. Of course, we come back for furlough. But it's been 16 years since we moved away. And this country has changed. And you, you have a big task ahead of you. Amen. You've got to be right here preaching the gospel. Uh, preaching the gospel. Don't get up. Don't quit. Back up your pastor. Back up this local church. And get involved in missions. Amen. Amen. Pastor, thank Amen. you. Amen. I'd have to say, I believe God called him. To Greenland. You know, when you think about all the things that he just was talking about, how God provided open doors, bless it. I mean, that's just evidence that that's God's place for him and the family. And uh, then to see the fruit of it. Folks, let me just say, don't ever think that you're wasting your money by giving it to missions. Because one day, it will be worth it all. When you get in heaven and you see the faces of so many that uh, we've had just a little part of, uh, what a blessing that's going to be. And so let me encourage you to be faithful and to keep praying for the Shoal family. He has a display out here, I believe. And so make sure you, if you haven't had a chance to meet them, uh, they're a good, good, solid family. Uh, the Chip, how old are you? Twenty. 20 next month, he's going back to Greenland. Amen. He teaches school, I think, uh, English. No, yeah, yeah, yes, English. You just graduated, didn't you, this year? And she's going back to Greenland. God is going to use this family Amen. in a wonderful way. And so let's be in prayer for them. Let's pray. Father, thank you. Lord, what a blessing it is to hear the, how you work in the hearts of your people. 
Lord, we know that you own everything, Lord, and, and uh, Lord, sometimes it's good to just be reminded and to hear how you have done things that are impossible in man ways, in man's eyes, and yet, Lord, we're so thankful that with you all things are possible. Help us to be found faithful. Help us to be prayer warriors for these that stand on those uh, foreign shield, uh, fields. And Lord, help us to be found faithful in our giving to keep them uh, supported as they endeavor to do your work in the place that you've called them to, to the people that you've led and put on their hearts. Heads are bowed tonight. And I wonder, through what you heard tonight, has God just touched your heart? Have you... Has, have you been encouraged to just know that God can do all things? And I wonder how many of us would say, you know, preacher, somewhere in that message, God just showed me in whatever, maybe I'm having a little difficulty, a little problem, but he just showed me that he can do all things. And I'm just going to learn to trust him more. Here's my hand tonight. Anyone like that? God bless you. Many hands. That's right. God is still there. And that's wonderful. Wonderful. Father, I thank you for tonight, and I'd ask, Lord, that you would bless. Maybe some just need to come and say, Lord, if you did it for Brother Shul, you can do it for me. Lord, I'm just going to trust you. I'm just going to uh, lay myself on this old altar and say, Lord, uh, I'm yours, and wherever you want me to go, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to be willing to just yield my life. Maybe not to Greenland, maybe just next door. But Lord, wherever you call me, I'm going to be willing and uh, able to accomplish what you want in my life. Bless the invitation tonight. Thank you for what we've heard. Bless it, we pray, and seal it in our lives. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Heads are bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet, shall we? Mary's going to come and lead in the stands of the invitation. And tonight, if, if you need to just come and say, Lord, just increase my faith. Why don't you do that tonight? as he leads us in that stanza of invitation. stands while these are praying. 